This is Grow Omaha Uncut, where you can watch our radio show, including what goes on in the commercial breaks. And be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals here at your service. We're brought to you by NAI NP Dodge Dingman's Collision Center and d and Roofing and Siding. This is the only show in the metro area that talks about business growth, real estate, construction, economic development, really anything that goes into making your favorite city more vibrant and more prosperous. And now, without any further ado, it's time to bring on my co-host, a man who is legendary in the real estate profession, Trenton Magid. Good morning, Mr. Beals. How are you? Good, good. You know, it's College World Series yeah, weekend. It is. One of the best uh, ten day periods of the year in our city. I went to the game last night. Did you really? Yeah, it was a great game. It was Virginia versus Florida, and uh, it came down to uh, a run scored, a walk off run in the bottom of the ninth inning. You know, both games yesterday. You stayed till the end, obviously. I did. I stayed. I stayed till the end. Had a great time. It was fun last night. They, they I think they had close to twenty five thousand people uh, for both games, like twenty four something for Is both that a games. Full house? I, pretty much, pretty much. I think the stadium capacity officially isn't it just a hair below twenty five thousand. I'm uh, let's go with that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And I know for both games they had over twenty four. Um, you know, it was cloudy uh, last night, but you know it never rained or anything like that. But yeah, great, uh, great scene, great atmosphere. I think the area around the stadium. This year looks as good as it is as it ever did. Uh, I don't know. Are you planning on getting to a game? I hope so. Were there uh, were there uh, vendors running around saying peanuts? Uh, and, uh, I'm always like, what? <laughs> you're, you're like, I didn't. You know, now that you mention it, in all seriousness, I don't recall seeing vendors going up and down the aisles this year. Yeah, they. You know, that's it's the newfangled uh, concession stand. Well, you know, there are differences. For instance, um, I noticed there was no poured beer, no no beer in, in cups. It was all in cans. So that was the only the option they had. And they open them for you, I'm sure. Yeah, why do they do that? So they don't you don't have a something to chuck at people's heads. Oh, is that why? Yeah, just like at, at uh, CHI Health Center, usually they take off the the lids on the plastic bottles and stuff like that. That's why? I, I would think so. Oh, okay. Cause so that's why I always just bring caps with me. That's a good uh, point. Go weighted caps. <laughs> put, a, put a little fishing a fishing weight inside your caps just to make them a little bit heavier. Yeah. Sorry um, to give people bad ideas. Well, what I'm excited about and we're going to talk about later is is all of the development and all the restaurants that have opened. And you went to a, a grand opening of Let It Fly and uh, Fat Putter is open. And um, there's, there's a lot of uh, retailers and restaurants that – worked hard to get open yeah and and, and understandably so yeah downtown's looking great right now and and there'll be a lot of things in our various stories today that uh, cover downtown and other parts of of the city as well so given that let's go into our news of the week which is brought to you by eagle mortgage eaglemortgagecompany.com is where they reside online they reside in person at 114th and Davenport. But Holly Schneiderwind and her team at Eagle Mortgage, they've been with us here on Gromha for about eight years now. We've been partnering with them for a long time. And over those eight years, we have referred countless uh, homeowners, home buyers, home loan borrowers to Eagle Mortgage. And everyone we've ever referred there has always been so happy with the results. They say things like, you know, Jeff and Trenton, uh, Holly and her team really took good care of us. Uh, their mortgage brokers listen. And the nice thing about a mortgage broker, they get to shop the entire market. They're not beholden to one bank. And so they can find the best solution for you. So if you're thinking about making that big decision, a new house, definitely talk to Eagle Mortgage. Uh, you'll be happy that you did. EagleMortgageCompany.com. Well, Trenton, let's get into the news of the week. First of all, the mayor, Gene Stothert, uh, will not recommend an annexation package this year. Now, there are 139 SIDs, Sanitary Improvement Districts, in Douglas County that would be eligible for city annexation. This is very unusual, but uh, uh, Mayor Stothert's administration has some criteria that uh, they depend on to determine whether adding an SID would make financial sense for the city. And apparently there are none that make sense. Well, what sanitary 
and improvement districts are basically a taxing authority. And if the debt is too high on those, um, the city, when they annex those areas, they actually um, float municipal bonds. And um, in, in exchange for that, they get the, uh, they get the taxes. Um, but if, if the debt's too high, it just doesn't make sense. And so um, it's probably a, a smart move on her part. And uh, that just means next year there'll be a lot more. Yeah, hopefully next year some of them will be uh, ready. You know, as a taxpayer in the city of Omaha, I applaud uh, the mayor and her administration for being careful about that. As a guy who's really excited to see Omaha city limits pass 500,000, I was a little bit disappointed we didn't add X city one this year. But we're, you know, this. We're this, right up there, are we? Yeah, the city limits are really within There's a whisker. 493. 490, you know, 490 or something like that. Yeah. So within a couple of years, the city of Omaha will definitely be over 500,000. Well, here's a public service announcement. So I've had people in our office as well as friends and business or real estate owners ask about protesting taxes. And, and I believe this is the month where you can send them in and stuff, but you can go to dcassessor.org to find out about it. But, but June is the, the deadline for protesting 2000. 23 valuations. You're not protesting taxes. You're protesting the valuation of your property. And they they make you give comps and good reason and things like that. And then those are actually uh, due and payable December 31st, 2023, but they're not delinquent, nor do they accrue interest uh, in, until April 1 and August 1 of 2024. So we pay in arrears. So we're paying 2023 taxes that they're assessing now in 2024. Well, the uh, opening date for the future Moxie by Marriott Hotel at 12th and Harney Street in the Old Market has been delayed. Uh, Most recent opening date had been declared as June 30th. Now it's looking to be July 27th. This is a six-story, 105-room hotel new to Nebraska, uh, closest existing locations, Minneapolis and Chicago. Uh, this is one that we've been talking about for a long time. I bet you it's been four or five years since they announced this. <laughs> Has Easy. to be, yeah. yeah. It seems like... This is where the uh, diner was. Every once in a while, uh, every once in a while, these hotels uh, seem to take a little longer to build than than one might think. Now, uh, in fairness, there was a pandemic in there, and it's a tough site because... Um, it, it's a tiny, tiny little site that they're putting this building on. But interesting how some of these hotels just seem to take a while. Interesting article about the M's pub fire, you know, finding uh, MUD responsible for half, and then uh, was it was it the the vendor? I think that that was responsible for the for the other half. But uh, the M's pub owners got about three million dollars for lost wages and and rebuild and things like that. They they didn't settle early. They they stuck it out for. Um, it's 2016, so seven years basically. So they got what, what they were due. And um, I sent you a picture. It was on uh, January 9th, 2016. And I happened, it was like two something in the afternoon. I'm eating at Trini's with a friend. Hear this boom, the building shakes. And I go out and I take a picture about two minutes after the explosion. And there was just a little bit of fire in the picture. Just a little bit of fire. And uh, so. And little did we know that little bit of fire would completely gut that building later in the day. Unbelievable how long that's gone on. Yeah, that, that, it's hard to believe that was in 2016. And it's hard to believe that it, it takes that long uh, just to get these things. To litigate that stuff. Well, and, and, you know, the place where Gather uh, in Omaha, good solid restaurant around the corner from Mims Pub. I mean, it's amazing how many years that space was empty before Gather was able to open. Well, and, and that was, was it called Market House, I think? Yeah, and then before that, for it was fi- where for like Vivace. A couple months or whatever. Yeah, it was Vivace. And that Gather goes all the way back. And it's cool. And they have the microgreens in the basement that they grow. Neat place. Uh, without soil. So uh, the Baby Bob Bridge. Um, this, I want my Baby Bob, Baby Bob, Baby Bob. I want my Baby Bob. This is the this is the pedestrian bridge which will lead to the pedestrian bridge. So we've got the Bob Carey Missouri River pedestrian bridge, and it's great and people love it. But the problem is, if you're in North Downtown and you're not familiar with the area, people think to themselves. How the hell do I get to that bridge? Well, this is going to span the railroad tracks. We've been talking about it for years. Um, It has been delayed, uh, according to the World Herald. This is because of material shortages. No surprise there. Uh, Material shortages have been a big deal in the construction industry. The starting date will now be October 
Um, and in, instead of it was supposed to start last month. Now it'll be October and it should take about a year and a half. Wow. So it'll be nice to get that done. Now, the city of Omaha has approved five hundred and fifty one thousand dollars to study to study and determine if West Maple Road should be expanded from four lanes to six lanes between Interstate 680 to the east and out at Highway 275 to the west. Glad we're doing this. Um, my hope is that the study indicates that, yes, indeed, it does, because uh, the traffic can be quite sluggish on that time. And plus, there's a ton of growth coming in far northwest Omaha. I will say this, though, Trenton, in my humble opinion, I think 204th Street is going to need that widening before Maple does, because 204th Street already is getting pretty thick, and there are still countless acres between West Dodge Road and Gretna that are going to be developed, and there's no place to put another major north-south road any further to the west because the river bluff is there. In fact, in some ways I say um, – uh, I wish the Nebraska Department of Roads or the city of Omar or Douglas County, who was ever involved in it, made that a freeway from day one when they first widened it. It was kind of short-sighted, and I know money is always an issue, but that desperately <clears throat> needs to be a freeway. So we got two issues there, 204th Street and West Maple Road. Now, it's unfortunate that we didn't have the foresight or to do an 880 loop, like 680 loop within an 880, and the de facto is, is 204th Street, Highway 31, Highway 6, and... We developed um, from 1998 the Thompson Family Farm from 168 to 177th Street. And I remember one of the things that were attracted, besides some train lanes or whatever, the, the four-lane divided highway was already in, and that really spurred development. So it, I think it's important to widen it now, even if it's not needed for five years, which I think it is already needed, do it while it's a lot easier to do. Yeah, the city of Omaha has released a 20-year citywide facilities plan for the libraries. Uh, No libraries are slated to close according to that plan. Uh, The libraries will need a grand total of an additional 100,000 square feet of public space. Most of that needs to be in West Omaha where all uh, the growth has been so explosive. Should cost a projected $215 million. Several existing library buildings would be renovated over that 20-year period. Um, Of course, a new library being uh, proposed for Southwest Omaha would be a nice addition. Is is the one on 72nd and Dodge just going to be awesome? Is that included in that price? Well, I I don't believe so. um, Well, kudos to the Heritage. Because that one's already a done deal. I mean, that one starts construction next month. Heritage is it? Does it really Heritage Omaha or demolition of the do space? Heritage Omaha has really stepped up as far as libraries go. Oh yeah, we have to be very thankful uh, for that organization. You know, there's one issue, and there are going to be some uh, listeners who live uh, in in the area near Swanson Library that are going to not like to hear me saying this, but if we're opening a new major flagship library at 72nd and Dodge, do we really still need Swanson Library at 90th and Dodge? That seems awfully close. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's antiquated and it might still have the uh, Dewey Decimal System and the uh, <laughs> card catalog in there. And uh, I wonder if they have microfish. Still. I don't know. The last time I set foot in Swanson Library, I was, I was probably like in fourth grade. But a uh, nice place. But seriously, if you're going to have the flagship library at 72nd, sell that land to a developer. There's an orbit stop right there. That'd be a great place for like, you know, like a five story apartment building close to the orbit and that or, sort of thing. Yeah, or, or like sure, a modern version of uh, Swanson Tower or something like that. I'm sure the people who. We could keep it, resi- we can make it residential. I'm sure the people who live in that neighborhood who love the fact that their kids can walk to the library are cursing me right now, but uh, it does seem awfully, awfully close. It's kind to, of a concrete. Yeah. Like this, you know, it's, it's a little, it's, it's definitely looking dated. Well, there is a uh, really small but very cool addition to downtown Omaha that happened this week. It's a miniature park, and it is on the northwest corner of 12th and Capitol Avenue. If you can picture that space, there's a parking garage. Um, It serves that building that has the World Herald in it uh, to the south. So there's this parking garage. It sits back kind of a ways, and there's kind of a grass area that dips down there. Well, National Indemnity, which uh, owns it, uh, made this happen financially. Uh, ENA Consulting did the design. Mulhall's Nurseries did the installation. 
but they put a miniature park, or sometimes people call them pocket parks, and it's baseball themed. They painted a beautiful baseball mural uh, on two corners uh, panels of this parking garage, put in like a little home plate. It's tiered and terraced, a lot of seating areas, just kind of a nice little, you know, it's part little seating area, part little piece of art what was there was it just a grassy area just grassy area and trees so and kudos to everyone involved in it because it's the little things like that i didn't get any credit for it on the on the property they couldn't have signage yeah it's the little things like that trenton that just make the city look a little sharper a little more exciting and uh, that's a nice addition to the downtown the stakeholders area. and people give here and and we do our best and on this show and and other forms of philanthropy Everybody contributes, and, and it's, you pay it forward, you educate uh, the up-and-comers in your industry, and that's what's so special about Omaha. And that is your News of the Week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. Uh, you can find them at eaglemortgagecompany.com or at 114th and Davenport Street. When we come back, we're going to talk about Omaha being one of the best places to live for families. We're going to talk about the new Let It Fly sports bar in uh, the Capital District and uh, downtown parking changes. All of that and more uh, coming up after this. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing and Siding. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Get your tickets now. I got got two quick things to go. Okay, no, you first. Okay. Uh, Number one, I think the taking the caps off the beer bottles at the stadium, liquor wise, liquor law. No, why? Because you you can't take it home. Uh, You have to drink it where it's served, where the liquor license is, and that's the stadium. But we're we're talking about bottles and cans. Yeah, I am too. Okay. They have to open. So, in other in other situations, it makes more sense. There's so many people that have underwear to walk about the littlest things. Now, other places, venues, it's just that it, there's only one law. And they have to apply by it. Uh, very popular council books bar opening uh, the second location in Omaha. What's that? Lower right, Salty Dog. Okay, it's interesting. Because, okay, I didn't see the World Herald, but I saw this on uh, uh, E Omaha Forum. Someone mentioned it. So I called the that they're going to the former Coco Key Water Resort. Uh, and the, and there, so then I called, uh, I texted the developer of that project. And uh, this is why you should listen to Uncut, folks. <clears throat> why you should watch Uncut. So I texted the developer of MH Landing. Uh, and he said, what did he say? oh, I, no, no, I emailed him, I lied. I said, uh, I heard the Salty Dog and Grill from Council Bluffs is open at MH Landing. Is that true? If so, when did they open? He said, not signed. Not signed yet. For what? He said, not signed yet, but looking very hard. For what? Uh, for MH Landing, the Salty Dog. Oh, okay. And he said, we have two other users as well, but non-Omaha tenants. But there's a liquor store going there, too. That's uh, Yeah, that's that um, uh, starts with an M. We talked about it uh, on Grow Omaha. It's uh, Macadoodle. Mac- and it's liquor and... I think it's probably a computer. I think it's more like a competitor to wall to wall or wine, beer, and spirits, you know, big liquor superstore. Or uh, Spirit World. Maybe Spirit World. Similar to what it used to be, maybe. But, but anyway, so this says it looks like it's a W, so that's weird. Okay. Whatever the world, or how, where the comes from. Well, if it's in the World Herald, I can go ahead and report it on next week's newsletter. Yeah. They got it from Mind the Burrell, I'm sure. Mind if I keep this? Nah. Did, did you enjoy that game last night between um, Florida and Georgia? Um, I uh, uh, it was Florida and Virginia. Thank you. Not according to the what's that? Because the score is in the middle. What are we looking at? The scores in the box in the middle, lower middle. Georgia. 
It was Virginia. Oh, and then on the front page, opening day at CWS didn't disappoint as Oral Roberts rallied to beat TCU while LSU. Could you imagine if Oral Roberts took the whole thing? If they even been invited to the big dance? Hilarious. Oh, anyway. They were there. Here's the punchline. Yeah, uh, 60 years or 65 years. While LSU Wake Forest battled in the nightcap. Boy, they're really having a hard time with the world. The world they world trouble. Yeah. And then, of course, they butchered it twice. And if they wanted to sell paper papers, this would be the time to do it because the out of town people want to see what's being written. Yeah. They really screwed the pooch on that. Here we go. Sad, Too bad. I used to be a world health paper boy. I work with us, Roger. I used to write for the world health. Yeah, he did. Yeah. A few years. Podcasts. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beal sitting next to Trenton Maggot in the big KFAB penthouse studio high above Underwood Avenue in beautiful downtown Dundee. The show is brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing and Siding. You know, DNM Roofing and Siding been around here for decades. And uh, as the name indicates, they take care of roofs. They take care of the siding on your house, but they do a very good job of it. A lot of people don't realize that they also serve the Des Moines, Iowa market, and they have a sister company, DNM Roofing of Texas in Houston. Um, but we really care about what they do here in Omaha. It doesn't matter whether you're looking for a residential roof repair or maintenance or a commercial uh, roof whether service. flat or pitched. Flat pitched we could be kind of like the, the guy with butterfly shrimp coconut shrimp yeah. like mansard but roof, really flat nice roof residential there. roof like from the office staff to uh eric obremt the owner it's unbelievable that the guys on the uh, um, on location and stuff they've always been really responsive and we, really, really take care of people we absolutely love them so uh if you want to find out more just go to d and m roofing.com well, Trenton, Omaha ranked number 34 on Fortune Magazine's recently published list of 50 best places to live for families. Uh, Omaha, number 34. The top three were Cambridge, Massachusetts, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and Silver Spring, Maryland. Now, other cities in our region here in the uh, Great Plains to make the list included, in order, Olathe, Kansas, number six, suburb of Kansas City. Yep. Egan, Minnesota, number 11. That's a suburb of Minneapolis. Uh, Lee's Summit, Missouri, number 14, also a Kansas City suburb. Iowa City, Iowa, College Town, number 17. Uh, the Frozen Tunda of Fargo, North Dakota, was number 30. Interesting. The Not Quite So Frozen, but Still Cold Tundra of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, number 35. The windswept High Plains venue of Cheyenne, Wyoming, number 39. The Mile High City of Denver, number 40. Oklahoma City, 44. Now, Omaha was the third largest city to make the list. Most of them were small suburbs or small or small cities or whatever. We'll take it, but we have room for improvement. Yeah. I mean, 34 means that there are 33, 33 that were ahead of us. Yeah, maybe we should do some research, and next week we'll discredit whoever the author is. Well, unless uh, and unless other places wanted to rank us lower, that's true. Uh, but I think that's pretty pretty impressive. Um, it, Omaha just thank you for the recognition. Constantly shows up on on these lists that involve quality of life or economic prosperity, and that's a good good thing. Um, it, it it helps people realize that this is a good place to to live, to visit, to invest. So Trenton um, Grow Omaha visited the. Let it fly ribbon cutting on Thursday. This is the 12,000 square foot sports bar. That's a big sports bar. Uh, at, uh, oh, it's about between 10th and 11th in Capitol. It's in the Capital District. Some of you may know where the Texas Day Brazil, uh, Brazilian Steakhouse is. It is just east of that or west of the Marriott with Jay Gilberts and Starbucks. So right there in the Capital District, beautiful build out. Um, I was quite impressed. This is actually founded by a former NBA basketball player. Uh, he started his first one in a Memphis suburb, and then he opened the second one in his his home state of South Dakota in Sioux Falls, and uh, so this one is his his biggest yet. Is this the third? Yeah, it is the third, and uh, it was interesting. Um, uh, Creighton coach Greg McDermott and his son, yeah, uh, Doug, the NBA player, they're both investors Doug in Nick it. Buckets, and they were at the at the opening. Anyway, um, the uh, the TV screened. 
uh, in front of the bar is exceptionally uh, monstrous. And uh, they have a podcast studio. It looks it looks like a nice radio studio, but they do a lot of sports podcasts out of there. And apparently a lot of uh, a popular local sports podcast. Uh, podcast will originate out of there. When we were there, there were uh, uh, there was some show broadcasting out of there. I'm sure it's not as good as what we have here at KFAB, but uh, as podcasts go, they're probably pretty good. Yeah, um, but maybe, maybe rate, we should go try it out. Yeah, and so and I didn't I didn't actually order any food there. I was only there for a short while, but they had a couple uh, sample appetizers uh, for people while you're there, and and, and it w- it was quite good. So it's a nice addition to the capital district. And uh, very, very lively, very exciting, well lit. Now, just to the west side of that same building, uh, construction is really just about to get started on those two uh, very large bars that uh, are out of Iowa City, Iowa. One will be a martini bar and one will be kind of like a, oh, just a general theme. In the Capitol District. Yeah, in that same building uh, on the west side of that building. Did they do that one that was like the emergency room theme or the medical theme? Remember they were going to do that down there? It rings a bell, but I I can't think of it, so my guess is probably not. And then Frank's Pizza took the lighthouse? Yeah, that's open. Um, Last night uh, after the game, I walked around a little bit, and uh, Frank's Pizza was quite lively. Let It Fly was very, very lively. You know what's interesting? As crowded as it gets downtown, though, uh, during the College World Series, as I walked around a little bit after the game, there were a lot of bars where you you could get in and get a space to have a drink. It was really only, like, the only one that, to me, as an old guy, I, I looked at it and said, there's no way in hell I'm going into a crowd like that was Blatt because it's right. Right, it's right across the street from the stadium. The others, like a lot of them, you could like, they were crowded, but you could find a space to go it, in and have a drink. It's important to have a strong capital district, good owners, and, and it really connects uh, the Builders District where Keywood is and that their park that's going to be there, The obviously the ballpark, and then all the way to the old market. And, and the old market benefits by having continuous – Activity. Yeah, in an urban area, activity begets activity. Yes, there's a such thing as competition, and, and, and I guess there's only so many dollars to go around, but activity begets activity. If you've got a busy area in an urban area, um, the adjacent uh, commercial areas will be busy because people people are drawn to concentrated activity. It's just like car dealerships. You, you want, you know, you say... And sometimes I tell my clients that if, if 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 they treat us like restaurants, I just want to be your favorite restaurant, you know. <laughs> and and so people are gonna, if 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 they eat at Frank's every day, they're going to get burned out and they're going to go to the next one. But if they eat at Frank's once a week and then they they eat it, let it fly, and they go back and forth to different restaurants, you just want to keep them in the area. Well, yeah. And when you're talking about a sticky uh, customers, they say uh, when when you when you're talking about a dense area like a downtown variety and, and diversity of choice is critically important. That's one of the reasons why people are drawn to to dense areas like a downtown or like an Exarban or like a, a Blackstone district because you want diversity of choices and and the excitement that comes from, you know, so many people and so many businesses and so many things to do. And I'd so, be interested to see what the fat uh, putter, which is 14,000 feet that has the food options and stuff. I'd like, I'd be excited to see what the quality of that food because that guy's really expanding and, and this is his first big kitchen. Yeah, we need to uh, pop in there sometime in the next couple of weeks. Well, hey, we we promised you we'd be talking about new downtown parking. We are going to. We're just going to bump it to the next segment because we're overdue for the news on the half hour. So we'll break for the news, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about downtown parking. And we're also going to be talking about the five uh, new developments in Omaha that will have the greatest impact on future growth and development. So all of that and more, you're listening to Jeff Beals and... And Trenton Maggot on Grow Omaha brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DM Roofing Insighting back shortly on News Radio 1110 KFAB. See, we can make our own list. We don't need these national, international magazines and digital companies that decide that they get to pick what's good and bad. We put Omaha at the top. And uh, according yeah. to Jeff Beals, Omaha's number one place in the country for families. <laughs> <laughs> I'm raising a family here, damn it. Uh, it's live radio. Co-host has to go to the restroom. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. I was going to say you're going to watch sausage get made, but something about that just didn't seem quite. Yeah, it's right. best. <laughs> How are you set for minutes? Um, I've got um, all 
five for next week ready to go. And then I've got three more for the following week because next Saturday Trenton's going to be here with a guest co-host. We might want to remind him when he gets back because he's certainly forgotten. Um, but uh, i got to go to a baseball tournament in Kansas City. Oh, next week. Yeah. Okay. You're not practicing your karate moves? <laughs> You didn't watch last week's show? <laughs> no. no I Are you kidding? I don't I, I don't watch this shit when I'm not here. Every time Trent would come back, you, you were doing something else. You were doing karate moves? Ready to take control of your phone One of them was you were doing karate well, then you better take Actually, I do need to watch last week's show because... Um, he had Mayor Mike Evans on, yeah. uh, and he, there probably is something he may have said that could be newsletter story worthy. And I, I wanted to do that last week, but I just ran out of time. Make sure you watch the uncut part too. The what part? Uncut. Oh, the uncut. Remember, but it seems like there was something. Something did. Did he disparage me during the uncut? No. Okay, good. In that case, I'd watch it very closely. Um, the reason why I asked uh -huh. is. If we could jump on those pretty quick after the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Because I got to run my car home to my wife. Oh, okay. Because there's some medication that the dog needs. And she needs to run out to the vet. So, West Omaha. so basically, let's say, it's like the moment we say, on News Radio 1110 KFB, Pult. I just, I just need to see if. We can get on it. Yeah, just a little, you know, by a couple minutes after, so I can get out of here about ten fifteen. I, like I said, it is all ready to go. Good. And and the quicker we can we can do it, the better because we got a bunch of errands to run before I'm going to go to the one o'clock CWS game. Uh -huh. And. Um, and then I'm not going to the night game because I'm just going to chill. I'm going to make some homemade margaritas that uh, Chris and Jen Corey taught me how to make. And uh, kind of just enjoy the evening. Hopefully it doesn't rain so I can sit out on the patio, watch the night game. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to get both the game, the afternoon game in person and the night game on the patio. We might get some rain. Yeah, there's, uh, they were saying on KFAB as voiced by Roger Olson. Yes, I you, I'm familiar with what I said. Yes, you said after one o'clock there's. A, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a light bulb drive for the for profit corporation of iHeartRadio, uh, high above Underwood Avenue. This is what we have to endure as uh, radio celebrities. Uh, <laughs> I've long said that. The well, first, I've long said that the We'd first. We'd like four matching light bulbs, please. Okay. I've long, I've long said that the first, do, the first donation that the Trenton B. Magan Foundation ever makes to a for-profit company, yeah, ought to be this for this chairs one. for these for these hideous chairs. Light bulbs. Some microphone covers that aren't thirty years old. <laughs> Give me just a minute. I don't know. Those are no real reason to replace them. I uh, know. What about once every six weeks, my lip will inadvertently brush against this thing, and I feel like going home and like gargling with bleach, because God only knows the people. <laughs> it kind of evolves into a, like a slow-moving fungus. Oh, he's a super bug on here right now. <laughs> I mean, you think about all well, they the... They don't live any longer on those than we do anywhere else. You think about all the guests that come in and speak on these things, all the radio personalities. I mean, the weekend, it's just like a revolving door of us, people like us coming in here. Every hour, someone different. <laughs> so we have a robin's nest in a really safe place underneath our big deck on a sconce that's just LED so it doesn't get too hot and the, we don't turn the light What's on anyway. A sconce? A sconce is the thing on the outside of your uh, house, the light packs. Oh. They're sconces. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, but ours are like, we replaced them and modernized them. I don't remember that from real estate principles and practice. Yeah, it's not. It's because it was residential. Um, it can be commercial. But anyway, so it's a nest and it's a mother and father robin and then there was three beautiful robin egg blue um, eggs and now they've hatched and they're getting bigger and bigger oh. and we can only see it through like a crack so we don't disturb them 
of the deck. You guys are so much nicer than I am I because in my house, if I see the birds starting to make a nest, the nest is gone. Yeah, see? Uh, so it's like I, I get up there a ladder with a broom handle, knock that thing out of there. Or the other way you can do it is you take your... Uh, Just one with nature. You take your hose, yeah. and you put the, 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 the little attachment on that does the jet spray. Yeah. You can flush the beginnings of a robin's nest out of your the no nozzle. Just turns it into it turns it into it liquefies it. Well, in in the trees? No, like if it's on like you know every year they try to build it like you know the downspout comes like this and they try and build it up in the downspout. Once I see it, it doesn't last very long. Uh, Jeff is a little bit violent when it comes to nature. You know, at least you're not a hunter. Like if it flies, it dies. I've hunted periodically in my life. Have okay. you? Yeah, I probably haven't gone in like almost 40 yeah, years. I'm pretty sure there's small game that you've hunted in your backyard. Um, I probably shouldn't say this on camera, but I may or may not, I cannot confirm, I may or may not periodically eliminate rabbits with a pellet gun. But that's only because I'm protecting nature. I've spent a lot of time uh, with my flowers. And he may have, may or may not have taken that rabbit and let it uh, crawl to its death in his in his neighbor's yard. So we had this old neighbor who's long uh, okay. who long moved. Okay, I have to. We're getting a lot of hits this week. I'm gonna have to tell the story when I come back about this old neighbor. Remind me in the next break. We have deer. I would never shoot a deer. I wouldn't even hunt a deer. I think I kind of like deer. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot at your service. The show is brought to you by D&M Roofing and Siding as well as Dingman's Collision Center. And Trenton has uh, worked with Dingman's for a long time. Uh, he is their official real estate agent. I'd like to call myself that. And I think they would tell you that, but I don't want to put words in their mouth. But I've actually been a great customer lately. And <laughs> yeah, that wasn't yeah. my fault. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, they did superior work on my exotic vehicle, and uh, you cannot tell except if you look at the Carfax. And uh, I don't even know if it's on there yet, but um, give it time. Yeah, no, I, I they were impeccable, great customer service, and uh, friendly faces, and. Uh, Sometimes you need Dingman's. I've used Dingman's a couple times in the last few years, and I am proud to say that, knock on wood, neither was my fault. But I acknowledge there could be a time in the future in which it might be my fault uh, when I need to go to Dingman's. Either way, they do a great job. As, as Darcy Dingman says on the KFAB commercials, accidents are hard. And uh, they are. I mean, they're hard financially, they're hard psychologically, and sometimes they're hard in terms of physical pain. Whatever it is, you need to get that car fixed, and you want someone that you can trust who has the most impeccable ethics and does darn good work, and that's Dingman's Collision Here's Center. a trivia question for you, Jeff. Do you think it's people texting while driving or icy roads that cause more accidents? I think it's people driving while texting. Okay. Uh, I don't have an answer because I, I haven't done the... I haven't done the uh, query. I will say uh, it is shocking the number of people that you see on the road who are utterly not there. I mean, uh, there are so many times you'll you'll be you know driving along, and you'll glance over to the person next to you, and somehow or another they are uh, they are uh, typing things on their phone while ostensibly driving. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, could you imagine when we have autonomous cars? Like people won't be able to won't even look at billboards. They won't look at anything. Yeah, it will. I suppose they'll just have their. I bet, you the, uh, I bet you when the autonomous cars come, the billboard industry rates <laughs> are going to go way down. Yeah. Although, I mean, in all honesty, though, on the other hand, yes, people will be buried in their phone more. But on the other hand, um, maybe you will be more free to notice billboards because you don't have to be, you know, looking at the brake lights coming on for the car in front of you, so you could actually really look at the billboard. Yeah, closely. maybe for the first couple of months, <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll be back on your phone. All right, it's time for our commercial real estate development spotlight of the week, which is brought to you by Noddle Companies. Uh, that uh, that firm, Noddle Companies, under the leadership of Jay Noddle, um, does so much good work here in Omaha and in other cities too. A lot of Omahans don't realize that. 
Noddle Company is based right here as a national company. They've got projects all over the place. But here in town, uh, they're famous for Exarban Village. Also, you know, current projects that they're working on right now, one of them is the Builders District. And I got to tell you, yesterday uh, when I was down at the College World Series, um, I went by and uh, checked out how the Mass Timber Building is coming along at 1501 Mike Fahey Street that Noddle Companies is building. This is a a beautiful uh, four-story, top-notch urban office building. And uh, they are up onto the fourth story. It looks like they've pretty much topped it out in terms of the wood and, and steel skeleton. They've got wood. It's coming along quite nicely, immediately south of uh, of Kiewit. So, so that building is coming along great. It really fills in that part of the Builders District. The Builders District is that, that area just west of Charles Schwab Field where Kiewit has its world headquarters. Uh, there's a Cambria Hotel, film stream, some restaurants, and, and room for more growth. Uh, Going to be a little urban uh, pocket park, uh, highly activated. You'll see more apartments probably coming to hotel. that area. The pocket parks would be really cool. And um, another Noddle Company's uh, project, Exarban Village, this is not necessarily news, uh, but I want to pass on a public service announcement Uh, For all of you who are thinking, okay, tomorrow's Father's Day, what are we going to do with dad? Uh, That farmer's market tomorrow uh, at Exarban Village, it's every Sunday, is really, really cool. We did it a few weeks ago, um, and then you, you walk around, and then all the restaurants are there. Like a few weeks ago when we went... Uh, we did the farmer's market. We had a blast. We bought some things. And then uh, all four of us, we went to Interrail Food Hall. And I swear all four of us uh, got food from a different restaurant. Uh, but, you know, you have like Herb Sant there and all the others. Just that could be a really good Father's Day option for Wait you Wait till you see what Nautil Companies does with the uh, Sunny's Airstream trailer. And they're going to spruce up a big park around there. So uh, that is your commercial real estate development spotlight of the week brought to you by Noddle Companies. If you want to learn more about them, a uh, couple options. The website is noddlecompanies.com. Um, they also have a pretty good Facebook page. Uh, just uh, search for Noddle Companies or uh, look for their Exarban Village page or their Interrail Food Hall page. You can find out all sorts of information. So we uh, we promised we had talked to you about downtown parking. Now, some of you probably don't get downtown very often. Others of you live downtown. I go down there quite a bit, even though I, I live pretty far out west. And uh, I have long just packed the uh, little, what used to be an ashtray, now it's a coin tray in our cars, full of quarters uh, for the parking meter. Well, we've gone through a big parking paying technology change downtown. Have you tried the new parking system, Trent? So I've used the, what do they call that app down, kind of in the old market? where The, you, the Park Omaha app or something yeah, like that? Well, yeah. There's the one where you, you put your credit card in and then you sign in and sign out. Yeah. And so you don't have to put it, you, you know, you put your license plate in. That's that's pretty handy, but I've never used my credit card on a parking meter, but I do carry a ton of quarters. And there's an article about how people that work downtown that aren't going to the games are bummed out about the cost of parking this week. But there is a saving grace if you get in early enough at the brick line. Yeah, well, I'm talking about the, they've replaced the meters with these new uh, bulk machines. Like uh, one machine covers several meters. I have not seen that. They still have the meter stands, but the actual thing that you would uh, you know, slide your credit card into or put the quarters into is gone. So now you either use the app or you go to these stations and they're they're kind of they're kind of attractive looking little machines, maybe about four or five feet tall. You're attractive. And to a um, and you go in and 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 you you you, you, you have to – now, part of it's a pain in the butt. So uh, the part that's a pain in the butt is you have to go to this thing. You have to know your license plate number. What? Um, and until – That's why I have personalized plates. Make it easy. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll have no problem. But until this, until I use this thing, I never even paid attention to what my license plate number is. So I get there, I'm like, license plate number. Ah, oh, gee. So I had to go back, back to the car. And then you have to know what zone you're in. Yeah. And, and, and so that part is a pain in the butt. And it was so much nicer just you pull up, boom, put in like three quarters, do the thing you're doing and leave. Now, I will give the system credit in that they've lowered the prices. So if you're only staying for a couple hours, it's cheaper than it used to be. Now, you you rent a lot of cars when you're on speaking engagements around the world. And, yep. And the first thing I do when I get a rental car is I take a picture of the license plate. Do you do that? No, I probably should. Yeah. Yeah, I probably should. I, I take pictures of uh, of any sort Another of- Another public service announcement. 
I do take pictures of any like scratches or dents around the outside of it so they don't try and stick that yeah. to you when you turn it in. You know, it's been about a year since I've said this, but uh, what's unique about Omaha downtown is that from Capitol to Leavenworth, all the streets are in alphabetical order. So if you're looking your way around, my problem is now I don't know where anything is unless I do the alphabet. There you go. And you have to know the alphabet. So that uh, <laughs> is that segment in the books. And we're going to uh, take the final break of the hour. And when we come back, it'll be the Turner Construction Lightning Round. A lot of things on the docket. Stay with us. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DM Roofing and Siding. Back shortly on News Radio 1110 KFAB. When you're in the mood for some good cadence, Jeff. Boom. Boom. We have really good cadence. Boom. Boom. It's almost like we've been doing this for a while. When you, we come back, you'll about four minutes. Four minutes, wow. Four, four minutes. Four minutes, maybe. Well, about four and a half with uh, music. You know, so I teased um, I teased something that's not going to happen. So it's four and a half until the music? Or no, the music okay. will come in at about four. So four to the music, okay. So um, this is going to yeah. be something that uncut people get that um, the rest of the folks don't. Um, I had teased us and we ran out of time. <clears throat> we were going to talk about the five um, new or announced projects that will have the biggest impact on additional growth and development in the Omaha area. So for uncut listeners only, or if you read the newsletter, um, number one is Project Next at UNMC. Number two is the Omaha Streetcar. Number three is the Mutual of Omaha Tower. Number four, the Riverfront Parks. And number five, Epley Terminal Expansion. And by the way, have you guys noticed? I, I was uh, I came through the airport a few days ago. They've already started tearing down those little canopies in preparation for building the big, huge, hundred thousand square foot canopy that, that's going in. It's interesting. So now it's a trend. Very interesting. So now people get wet if they're well. The canopies, the current canopies, hardly covered anything. Yeah, they were like just really and only on that middle island. Yeah. Uh, that they're t- well, I guess there are canopies close to the building, and those will probably come out too. But the big one is going to like. Like it'll be ninety-five thousand square feet of canopy, um, and you think about an acre is forty-three thousand some. And uh, how many hectares is that? So basically, it'll be uh, it'll be over two acres of of cover over the drop-off pickup area. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Wants to tour. <laughs> no, I just said accidents are hard, 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 which is the thing I made. I quoted her. All right, here we go. On Monday. Period. Can we do that after the ice company show? Mr. Mechanic, you'll find a diverse selection of our weekend shows on the podcast page at kfab.com and on iHeartRadio, number one for podcasts. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot at your service. It's time for the Turner Construction Lightning Round, in which we talk about a lot of things super fast. Turner Construction is kind enough to make this happen for us. Um, By the way, Turner is one of the... uh, deepest, uh, resourced, uh, most well-known and respected construction firms on planet Earth. And here in Omaha, uh, they have a very strong local office. They actually call it their Nebraska office. It just happens to be based here in Omaha. Headed by Patrick Sokol. What was that? Your microphone was off. Headed by Patrick Sokol. Yep. Market leader. Pat does that and has got a good team of, of several people here in Omaha. So if you're looking for a contractor for your project, uh, you should definitely uh, look at Turner Construction. We recommend them to everyone. In fact, I just made a recommendation uh, for Turner a couple days ago uh, for someone that I know that does uh, some construction stuff. And, uh, and and if that person ever decided to go with them, I know they'd be very, very happy. So thanks to Turner Construction for making the lightning round possible. All right, let's get into it. Flagship Restaurant Group has announced the names of three restaurants that will open in the Mercantile. Trenton, this is the project on the north side of the ConAgra campus. One of them will uh, supposedly open in July. It's called Memoir. It's going to be an American grill and bar. And then a year from now, two others will come. And these are in the Brickline building in the Mercantile District. Uh, One is going to be uh, either Champagne or Champong, I don't know how you pronounce it, a duck pin bowling entertainment venue. And the third one, Ghost Donkey, described as... (laughs) Someone got paid to come up with that name. Sounds delicious. Uh, Ghost Donkey, an experience-driven bar that will offer a huge mezcal list, a distilled alcoholic beverage made from any type of 
Magui? Mag- Magui? Magui? Mezcal. I don't know. Sounds great. Speaking of the mercantile, uh, also, we know that the opening date or the planned opening date for Tupelo Honey Cafe in the Brickline building, along with those three flagship restaurants, will be late October. You know where Tupelo is, right? Uh, Tupelo, Mississippi? No, it's right above Three Polo. Very good. Uh, the Fat Putter has opened at uh, the southeast corner of 10th and Capitol Street. Uh, four indoor nine-hole golf, nine hole golf courses, full bar, kitchen. Uh, this is from the owner of Prehistoric Putt. Trenton, you visited the new 135,000-square-foot Hy-Vee store in Gretna. I'll tell you what, it's an experience. Uh, separate bathrooms for everyone, four men's rooms, four women's rooms, and then a mother's room. And they have the wall burgers there. This place is massive, and you should check it out. Yeah, it is 192nd. It's a little overwhelming. 192nd and Highway 370, and it is the first high V to be constructed in the metro area since 2012. That's which interesting. Is hard to believe. Uh, Doozy's homemade ice cream and burgers has reopened in its new location, the former Jimmy's All American Malt Shop. At 4105 South 11th Street in Council Bluffs, that's really close to Lake Manoa. Hey, the owner of Omaha's Archtype Coffee will be one of 140 competitors in the World Coffee Championships. I didn't even know that was a thing, I bet. Where are those held? <clears throat> Coffee, Switzerland? Athens, Greece, actually. Really? And he claimed the title of U.S. Barista Champion recently, which qualified him to go to this World Championship. So Holy kudos. Moly. Yeah, his name is Isaiah Sheesh, 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 Isaiah Sheesh, owner of Archtype Coffee here in Omaha. That's pretty good coffee, by the way. Um, New Orleans uh, newspaper, which is NOLA.com, published a story uh, this week. And, you know, basically it was a Times story. Times Picayune. Yeah, it, it, it used to go by the Times Picayune, but now they rebranded themselves just as NOLA.com. You're kidding. Well, yeah. but, but the newspaper's called the Times Picayune. Any rate, they said. Um, uh, Barrett's Barley Corn and Pub uh, doubled their alcohol order, alcohol order as soon as Louisiana State University qualified for the series. I believe that's it. it. I'm uh, I'm out of here, and so's Trenton. So I'm Jeff Beals, and I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, D and M Roofing and Siding, and Dingman's uh, and Turner Construction. Gee, many Christmas. I will chat with you next week at nine o'clock right here on News Radio eleven ten KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.